Hi, my name is Autumn Dixon, and this week is June 24th through the 30th of the Come Follow Me program associated with the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And this week, we are going to be talking about Alma 13 through 16. And in these chapters, we see Alma preaching a variety of topics. One such topic is foreordination and how some people were given special callings before they came here. Now, this is the verse that describes this. So this is Alma, it's chapter 13, verses 3 through 4. It says, And this is the manner after which they were ordained, being called and prepared from the foundation of the world according to the foreknowledge of God, on account of their exceeding faith and good works, and the first place being left to choose good or evil. Therefore, they having chosen good and exercising exceedingly great faith, are called with a holy calling, yea, with that holy calling which was prepared with and according to a preparatory redemption for such. And thus they have been called to this holy calling on account of their faith, while others would re reject the Spirit of God on account of the hardness of their hearts and the blindness of their minds. While if it had not been for this, they might have had as great privilege as their brethren. So we see in these verses that there were people who were foreordained according to their faith and good works. They were prepared for specific roles as dictated by their good choices and faith in the premortal existence. Now, when I picture this, I often pictured general authorities and all of these leaders who are making really, really significant visible differences in the kingdom of God. And then after thinking about these leaders, I started to think about how many of us are not called <laughs> to these big visible callings that are changing things and making this big difference. Some of us have quieter callings. And what does that say about us? I used to think... <laughs> as a teenager, that it meant I wasn't good enough, that I hadn't been strong enough, I hadn't made all the good choices and had enough faith in the premortal existence, that I didn't have it within me to fulfill one of these special callings that the Lord needed me to fulfill. Interestingly enough, the second verse teaches us what keeps us from having the same great privilege as our brethren, and it's two things. It is hardness of heart and blindness of mind. Mind. So I want to talk about these two things, hardness of heart and blindness of mind in the context of foreordination. And I want to talk about the blindness of mind first. So what does this blindness of mind look like when it comes to foreordination? So obviously when you're thinking of somebody blind, someone who can't see. So we are not seeing foreordination clearly the topic and the doctrine surrounding foreordination. And not seeing it clearly or understanding the principle of foreordination clearly, I'm sure that can manifest a million ways, but I want to talk about one specifically. And it was actually my husband, Connor, who helped me see the doctrine of foreordination more clearly. And it's interesting because I don't think we ever talked about it. <laughs> I don't think he meant to teach me about it. But as I observed him, I had this dramatic shift in how I viewed foreordination and what that meant. Now, Connor is not at all what I thought I would marry. <laughs> I, at the time, had this idea of spirituality, and it was a very narrow view of spirituality. I was naive and I saw these essentially very regular and long patterns of scripture reading and prayer and all of these right worshiping tasks that you can cross off the list and to me that signaled spirituality and interestingly enough these are things that I'm good at my neurotic personality <laughs> means that my family reads the scriptures and prays and Connor and I go to the temple regularly and we have family home evening with all of the songs and the prayers and everything and it all gets crossed off. And that is what signaled spirituality to me and I believed that if you prioritized these habits enough, they would come easily to you. <laughs> 
then I got to know Connor. <laughs> and Connor was chaotic and impulsive. <laughs> if he's holding still at church, it's because I'm tickling his hand or his back. <laughs> he doesn't remember to eat regularly, let alone daily worship tasks. So as I was getting to know Connor, (laughs) the spirit would sometimes whisper to me while I was talking to him or looking at him. I feel like sometimes, (laughs) I don't know how to describe it. It was almost like the rest of the world just went quiet for a second while I was looking at him. And I could feel the spirit trying to whisper to me something about him that I couldn't quite grasp. That there were these moments where I would see him. We're talking about blindness in mind. I could see him differently. See him how the Lord saw him. And I could see him being molded into something very specific. Something different than what I had pictured. And for a while, because I was naive, (laughs) and I couldn't quite reconcile this with what I had pictured with what it meant to be spiritual. But I continued the relationship. Now, obviously, regular worshiping, daily worshiping is really, really good. And we should prioritize it because the Lord knows it can bless us. But I have also learned that these checking off these tasks don't necessarily equate to spirituality. I have learned that there are far more measures of spirituality. (laughs) I have learned that just become because these tasks come easily to me and my kind of personality, they don't come easily to everyone's personality. And it's not because I'm more righteous. It's because we were built differently by the Lord. He needed different kinds of personalities with different strengths and weaknesses because there are so many different ways to build the kingdom of God. And that's precisely what I mean by blindness of mind when it comes to foreordination. When I would read verses like this or think of what it meant to be foreordained and to have to lead and have callings, I would picture this very specific archetype, this very specific LDS archetype of what it was supposed to look like. And this narrow view, this blindness of mind, if you will, limited me. And, you know, there are some people who are foreordained to be temple presidents and foreordained to be general authorities, obviously, but those are not the only callings to be foreordained to. Can you imagine if those were the only callings that Heavenly Father cared about? (laughs) Like, if He only called people to those? Our Heavenly Father is so multidimensional, and none of us reflect Him perfectly, but we all reflect different aspects of him. I used to think that I needed to tame Connor to teach him how to be organized and to do daily things and have daily habits and all these things. But I learned that I was really wrong. The Spirit taught me that Connor was made unique because he had specific callings that he needed to fulfill. There are things that Connor can accomplish that I can't. (laughs) I can't. And it's because he was built differently than me. Foreordination and blindness sometimes means that we have this idea of what it's supposed to look like. We have We have this perspective and we think that foreordination looks like this specific archetype. And when we have that narrow view, only some people qualify. Only some people fit that mold. And what happens is we leave out wonderful, remarkable people who were given very specific talents and gifts that would help them fulfill other kinds of missions. Sometimes we leave out ourselves if we feel like we don't fit that mold or that archetype. There are so many more callings (laughs) and so many more personalities that we need to fulfill those specific callings. Now, when it comes to my work, my 
blog and my YouTube channel and my podcast, it is very easy to see how I have to seek out revelation very regularly in order to share a message about Jesus Christ. It's very easy to observe that. However, I have learned that Connor receives revelation just as much as I do. It just looks different. It looks blindness of mine. It looks different. So (laughs) I'll walk in on Connor sometimes and he is in like a trance-like state. He's just like sitting there and he's staring off into space. And I have come to learn that that means that I can't talk to him because he won't respond. (laughs) And I'll just go about doing whatever I was doing in the room. And all of a sudden he like comes out of it and he's like, okay, I got it. And this happens. <laughs> this has happened frequently. It's all, and it's always in that order. I come in and I'm like, oh, he's doing his thing. And then he comes out and he's like, I got it. That's what he says <laughs> when he comes out. And what that means is that he has come up with a solution to an engineering problem that he is facing. I have also learned <laughs> that he's being inspired with solutions. That He is experiencing revelation regularly as he does these engineering designs and comes up with ways to solve problems, but his revelation looks different than mine. We need to broaden our perspective on what it means to be foreordained. You can build the kingdom in a million different ways. Think of how the Lord built the world. What what concepts did he use? Physics, engineering, biology. There were all of these principles they're spiritual to him. And I think sometimes we are limiting ourselves when we only view our gifts as traditionally secular. It keeps us from reaching out to the Lord so he can expand our capabilities, our capacity. We need to cast that kind of blindness away. There are many kinds of foreordination, and they can all be spiritual when we choose to include include the Lord in them. And when we broaden this view of foreordination to whatever it is we're doing in our daily lives, (laughs) these incredible things happen. When we believe that we might be foreordained to something specific that the Lord gave us in our specific interests and what we love doing in our desires, we turn to the Lord because we believe That forward nation can look like that. And it vastly expands our ability to do good because we're including the Lord. And he he takes us beyond what we ever thought we could be. Having a more narrow view of forward nation, believing that your job is less important because it doesn't traditionally look spiritual, keeps us from stepping into that foreordination so that we can fulfill our missions and our capacities, whatever they may look like. It keeps us from turning to the Lord who can make us so much more. And this is where our hard hearts come in. Do we believe that he can work with us? Do we believe that he built us as we are? That all of the little unique things about us that may drive other people crazy Can we believe that the Lord made us as we are so that we could do something specific for him? Do we believe that he can utilize us powerfully and he can place us where we can make the biggest difference and change the world in powerful ways? And it is important (laughs) to understand what it means to be powerful. When we picture changing the world, we picture stadiums and large crowds and microphones. But the Savior taught individually and he ministered individually and in small groups and his voice only carried as loud as he could speak. We have to let go of our predilections about forward nation and what it means to serve powerfully, what it means to make a difference in the world and to influence the world for better. We have to let go of those things, soften our heart and allow the Lord to give us specific experiences to believe that he can be molding us and shaping us very specifically so that we are prepared to do the work that he wants us to do. And that work may not make sense in the eyes of the world, but it will make perfect sense in his context. I testify that no one is special. (laughs) 
Anyone who is willing to be worked with can be worked with. We're unique and there are unique callings, but there's no special secret ingredient to qualify for forward donation. It really, it comes down to being willing. The only thing holding us back from experiencing a great privilege as our brethren is an unwillingness to see <laughs> that we can be utilized by the Lord or a hardness of heart that causes us to disconnect from him so that he can't utilize us. If you're worried that your faith and your good works weren't good enough in the premortal existence, well, guess what? It, that can change really fast. <laughs> That can change at any point, and he can start today preparing you and molding you into the person that he can utilize to change the world. I testify that he is willing and capable and that he is seeking to turn you into everything he wants you to be. I testify that what he has in mind for you is so much better than what you have in mind for yourself. That perhaps all the things that you feel like makes you different or not good enough, these are things that the Lord can utilize to make you extremely powerful in His eyes. Maybe not in the eyes of the world, but in His eyes to influence the world for better. And I say that in the name of Jesus Christ, amen.